Swift lets us create property observers, which are special pieces of code that run whenever a property's value changes. These come in two forms. There's a did set observer that runs code after the property's changed, and will set when it's about to change. To see why it's useful, first look at this older code without property observers. We have a struct called game, with one variable property called score equal to zero by default. We then make one of these things. Then we go ahead and use the game. We'll say add 10 to score, score is now whatever, scores minus three, scores now whatever, scores plus one, scores now whatever. So we change the score, we print the score, change the score, print the score, change the score, print the score. Whatever we change, we print. Except as a bug, I totally forgot to print the score at the end there. So there's only two prints and there's three changes. That's a mistake. We want to print the score whenever it changes. Now, with property observers, we can prevent this kind of thing happening. We can actually attach that print call directly to a did set observer on the score. So whenever the score changes, it triggers did set and prints it out. To do that, we remove the print calls from the main body of our code and then squeeze it all up. We'll then make space inside our game struct and attach the observer to score like this. There's an open brace and did set print score is now score. And with that in place, we get access to that print call whenever score changes. Whenever in our code, wherever in our code, it will always update. It's really, really nice. Now, if you want to, Swift automatically provides a special constant inside did set called old value to read what the score was previously. Plus there's a will set equivalent when a score is about to change. You've assigned it, the code to assign's happening, it calls your will set, and the code to assign completes. Uh, and that will get a new value. So you get old value for did set and new value for will set. We can actually show all this functionality off in action using uh, one code sample, which will have various messages being printed so you can follow the code flow with actual execution in your playground. We'll say this, uh, struct app has a contacts array of strings. Inside there we a will set observer with print current value is contacts. Oops. And then print new value will be new value. Like that. So we're seeing as we're about to change values here, what's the current value and what is the new value. We'll also add in our did set, print that are now contacts dot count contacts. And we'll do print old value was, and again, we can use the old value constant to read it out. So that's our new app struck with various print messages happening. We can go ahead and use that. We can say uh, var app equals a new app, app dot contacts dot append, uh, let's do today append Adrian E, and then we'll do Alan W and Ish S, my posse. <laughs> and then, uh, yes, by the way, if you're curious, appending to the string array will trigger did set, change in the array. So it should print lots of text. Let's find out. Boom. So up here we have current value is empty array, new value will be Adrian E, and that's our will set observer running, because we're trying to append Adrian E. Then we have old value, uh, sorry, there are now one contacts, and the old value was empty array, that's our did set running. Then we have the, again, uh, the will set, and did set, and again, will set, and did set. So it's triggering all our prints, as you can see, so you can really follow the flow through. Now in practice, will set is used much more infrequently, let's say, much more rarely than did set. But you will still see it from time to time because particularly in, in Swift UI, sometimes when you announce changes, hey, uh, prepare an animation, you want to use will set. So it has time to prepare the animation correctly before you do any changes. Uh, regardless of which you choose, I would ask you to try to remember don't put too much work inside your property observers. You know, if, if we had game.score plus equals to one, that looks to us 
when we're writing it as a trivial operation. But that triggers intensive work or network requests or saves files or who knows what. It's going to catch you out on a regular basis and cause all sorts of performance problems.